Hello, welcome to Okawa Book Club. So we're your hosts, I'm Dylan. I'm John. And we're going to be discussing the teachings of Riho Okawa. Riho Okawa is a world teacher, master, and CEO of Happy Science Group. Today's episode will be on carbon footprints reducing, why Greta gets angry. This is a spiritual message book by Master Riho Okawa, founder of Happy Science. This book was published in January of this year, 2020. It came shortly after Greta's environmental movement and the popularity of Greta coming from her famous speech at the United Nations. The book has eight sections, and it begins with, Who gave spiritual influence on Miss Greta Thunberg? The Spirit's warning, Noah's great flood will occur again. Human beings are the enemy of the earth. I want to stop the civilization. Which God does the spirit believe in? Asking about Japan and China. Another spirit behind Miss Greta Thunberg's actions. Why the spirit wants to spread the global warming theory and after the spiritual interviews. So, John, to get this started, could you read from a section of the preface so that we know what kind of book this is going to be? Sure, Dylan. In the preface, Master Okawa states, I must not be the only one who felt that she had something that peaceful environmentalists don't have. In this book, we did a spiritual reading on the being who is guiding her. He goes on to say, I want to say there is a cycle to global warming, an occurrence of CO2 is not the only reason. Ancient Earth was a burning hell covered in magma. Due to volcanic eruption, the volcanic ash and CO2 covered the Earth. Now, the global warming's last stage of the 10,000 year cycle is coming. Climate change causes the transition in civilization. However, it is also one of the providences of God. Miss Greta and her supporters should know this. Thank you, John. So as you might have been able to tell, if you're listening, this was actually recorded in English. So these words are word for word from Master Riho Kawa's spiritual interview from Japan. And from here, you can see the transcript of that lecture of that spiritual message. So to get into this message, John, We've both been, you know, reading through this book again, and we've found some very interesting points. But if you were to summarize what's going on in this book, how would you describe it? If I was to give a basic overview, um, the premise is that it's basically we're trying to find out what are the spiritual influences that are guiding Greta in her environmental views, which are rather extreme. And at first, it's not initially clear. Uh, there's an interview with a being who calls itself Noah, although it's revealed that this isn't the Noah, uh, the biblical Noah. And then that being states that it answers to a higher being called God. But then in the interview with that second being, the being called God, in quotes, turns out to be the spirit of Vladimir Lenin, the original uh, communist leader in the Soviet Union. Yeah, so all this might sound a little shocking to you. So why is Greta being guided by these communist-type spirits? Well, the interviews really go to show what's going on here. First of all, you know, Greta's theories about science, about, you know, the global warming theory and about CO2, it's actually not really based on logic and science. Master Okawa reveals that it's a quite emotional and spiritually destructive thought that's coming from a dark side of the spiritual world. And, you know, at Happy Science, it's true that we do value, you know, nature and harmony. In the true words spoken by Buddha, we learn that one of the seven colors, the divine colors of light, is green, which is a color that does value such things as, you know, I stated nature and harmony. However, Greta's theory will not lead to a true restoration of nature or it will not lead to a restoration of science. It will just lead to a destruction of the capitalistic and liberalist societies. And why is that? Well, as emotional as that might make you feel, unfortunately, there are beings 
in the dark side of the spirit world that wants to stop this world from becoming prosperous, wants to stop this world from becoming happy, wants to stop people in this world from living the best possible lives they can to train their souls. So they want to make this world a more of a hellish environment that will make us all suffer more. And so we won't be able to accomplish our missions as children of God or Buddha. And I'm sure you might have similar thoughts, John, but you know, this, this book has so many different points as to why that's true. But is there any points that really stood out to you from in this book that you really felt should be highlighted? Well, I think in, in relation to what you were just talking about, you know, changing this world from being a very positive spiritual training ground into more of a hellish atmosphere. You know, the idea that's one of the ideas presented by one of the guardian spirits of Greta earlier in the book is that we need to, according to the spirit, get rid of electricity, essentially de-industrialize and return to living in an almost Paleolithic, you know, primitive way. And, you know, I, th I think today uh, there are people who sort of fantasize about these primitive times and think of them as simpler and natural and <laughs> they see it in this like positive light which is just not what it was. Those were uh, often very violent times. There were a, a lot of terrible things happening at that time. There was cannibalism. There was tribal warfare. I mean, it was just very difficult to survive. You can imagine how short the lifespans of the average people must have been. So obviously, this is not something that would encourage this world to be a spiritual training ground the way it is now, where we, on average, might have up to 90, 100 years of a lifespan and we were in which we are able to have very, you know, <laughs> tasks that today are very simple for us would become much more complex in a deindustrialized civilization. So I think that's an important point. And, and I think another important point is, as you also alluded to, just to realize that so much of the environmentalist movement, which is not to say that there's anything wrong with caring about your environment. You know, we, we should care about our environment. We live in it. We, you know, we need, we, we need that as part of this um, spiritual training ground as well. But so much of it is also informed by communist ideology. To me, that was one of the most powerful things revealed in this book, that at the background of the way it's being presented today, it basically is a communist ideology that's driving it. Mm. If you're familiar with Master Riho Okawa's spiritual interviews, you know, sometimes we are blown away by the words of high spirits and we're so impressed and our hearts are moved. And then sometimes we have spiritual interviews with world leaders, and then we are astounded by their strong opinions or their courage or their feeling of justice for the world. But here in this book is another kind that we have from time to time. It's really kind of hard to understand the first time you might read through because reality is that not all spirits are honest. Not all spirits are trying to tell the truth to happy science. So when we do these interviews with more negative spirits or dark side spirits, we tend to have them try to delude us. And essentially, it leads us with a kind of, you know, bad taste in our mouth reading their words. But that's exactly how the world of hell really is. The world of hell, hell is a place where there's no light of truth shining. It's a place where it's a false world, whereas the heavenly world is the real world. And once you understand that, it makes it a little bit easier to try and investigate what's going on here. You have to kind of think your way through the book and try to, you know, feel out, oh, is what they're saying true or false? And then do I trust what they're saying here or not? Then you can really catch a lot more gems and diamonds hidden within the words of this book. I think those are great points. And I think in a way, it's like an exercise for the mind to be more discerning when you're hearing about information just through the media or through any sources you get it from in your everyday life as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. You know, we even see in here the spirits really criticizing certain people. For example, uh, Spirit One on page 26 says, It's time to stop. You have much concern about earning money or only the fairy tale of global development, or your country only development, like the devil Donald Trump says, only America first. America is the champion of the devils. We must fight against that kind of evil people. So this spirit really hates the 45th president, Donald Trump. 
So then it's up to the reader to decide, are they being rational about this point or being irrational about this point? About every single situation in this book leaves you with a kind of question of trying to figure out how you feel and then try to think how the spirits might be trying to delude you about this point or that point. The book also gets into, you know, as you said, communistic leaders, and we have Spirit 2 up here. So what kind of things does this Spirit number 2 say? One thing that's emphasized by the spirit of Vladimir Lenin is that he is very much in favor of Russia becoming a superpower in the world. Mm -hmm. And now naturally this makes earlier messages in the book about the, the accusatory um, stance against America first, <laughs> totally contradictory. Mm -hmm. And he essentially is expressing the idea that by reducing carbon emissions, which in effect will hurt businesses and hurt industries in the United States and in other countries, it will make Russia more powerful. Mm. So it's a, it's a very biased perspective, obviously. It's not a rational perspective, and it's clear that it wouldn't apply to everybody. It's intended to apply to certain countries and mm. not to others. Yeah, that's exactly right. One way we think in happy science is that ideological crimes or spiritual crimes are more dangerous than crimes of physical nature. We see the devils at the bottom of uh, the world called hell are usually ideological leaders. They're people who espoused false values or false beliefs such as atheism, materialism, or you know, genocidal totalitarianism. Those types of people become very staunch devils in hell. And it's suspected that Lenin is such a being. He created the ideological framework which led to millions and billions of people suffering from the communistic regimes of the future that were based on his ideology. So he is not just a simple spirit. In many ways, he is much stronger than someone like Greta. And he's using this girl as a puppet to espouse an ideology that will lead to the destruction of the Western capitalistic societies and benefit the communist bloc of the old days, of the Soviet days. So. What we're seeing here is a kind of assault from the dark side into our world and using emotions and hysteria to trick human beings in the world to follow along with the, the dark side. And so we have to be very, very careful as to whether or not we're being deluded by them. Absolutely. And, you know, right now we're at a point where there's ideas like the Green New Deal being presented, which would be tremendously expensive, not necessarily scientifically backed. You know, and, and there is a difference in between scientists who are activists and scientists who are actual scientists. That is a, a large problem in academia today. So, you know, certainly something like the Green New Deal can be justified by so-called scientists who are really manipulating data to conveniently support their claims. Mm. And, you know, it's just something to think about right now, you know, as we're going into periods where there could be policy changes uh, and so forth. Mm. What are the forces behind it? And are they really in our best interest? And are they in the best interest of the world in general? Mm -hmm. That's exactly true. You know, we've had a lot of different perspectives on this book, but I want to end today with, talk with reading the afterword of the book, which shows Vihuokawa's very staunch and clear opinion as to what is right. It states, We already know that there is a China-related group behind the left-wing environmental activist, Miss Greta. Of course, this is not something that a 16-year-old girl can do. The purpose is to prevent President Trump from becoming re-elected. China, which is causing the most problems with CO2 emission, is urging this. Also in this book, we found the spirit of Lenin, the leader of the Russian Revolution, is behind the scene. I mean that Greta's activity only seems righteous, but is actually a communism revival movement disguised as environmental liberalism. Ask yourself, who will benefit by pressuring the liberalist and capitalist countries to eliminating CO2 emissions completely by 2050? 
you'll realize who this is if you think about that. You mustn't be deceived. The issue is not about climate justice, but about world justice. So it ends with those powerful words, and I think those powerful words should also end today's episode. Uh, you can learn more on okawabooks.com, or you can purchase it on Amazon or at your local Happy Science Temple. It was great talking to you again, John. Likewise, Dylan. In these trying times, stay happy, healthy, and positive. <laughs>